Like I couldn't, like you wouldn't even be able to tell if it was an X or Y or something. All right, so this is section 1.2, intercept symmetry and graphing key equations. The first thing we're going to talk about is finding the intercepts from an equation. We touched on it a little bit yesterday, um, but instead of a graph, we are going to just do the equation. To find the x-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for y and solve for x. To find the y-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for x and find y. So the way I remember this is uh, you want, for x-intercepts, you want to get x equals something. So y goes away, that's 0. For y-intercepts, you want to get y equals something, so the x goes to 0. So for example, find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts of the graph of y equals x squared minus 4, then graph by plotting points. So we find the x-intercepts, we're going to plug in 0 for y. <coughs> so when we do, we get x squared minus 4 equals 0. And then we factor this quadratic to x plus 2, x minus 2, set it equal to 0. When you have, um, <clears throat> the whole reason we learn all the, um, the identity property, the, uh, the multiplicate property of zero, is so we can do all this fancy algebra. Um, so I need to find out the scenario where x plus 2 equals zero. Boom. And where x minus 2 equals zero. Boom. So our x-intercepts are x equals negative 2 and x equals Two. So to find the y-intercepts, we let x equals to zero. That's a little bit easier. Zero squared is zero minus four is negative four. <clears throat> so let's plot these points. So if you look, we have the intercepts. Here are the x-intercepts at negative two zero and two zero. Here's the y-intercept at 0, negative 4. And then when we plug in these values for x, we get out the corresponding values. And it's a nice little parabola. All right, so to test an equation for symmetry with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, and the origin. <clears throat> A graph is said to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis if, for every point x, y on the graph, the point x, negative y, is also on the graph. So, and the way it makes sense to me is, I have an x value here, and it has a matching mirror point across the x-axis. So the y, you'll have a positive y value and a negative y value that correspond with each other. <clears throat> if a graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis and the point 3, 2 is on the graph, what other point is also on the graph, everybody? 3, negative 2 is also on the graph. A graph is said to be symmetric to the y-axis if for every point x, y on the graph, the point negative x, y is also on the graph. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Back to our friend 3, 2. If it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, then everyone together, what point is also on our graph? Yes, negative 3, 2. All right, now the origin. So you got x axis, y axis. And um, one guy that we don't deal with um, before now is symmetric with respect to the origin. So for every point on the graph, x, y, the point negative x, negative y is also on the graph. And the way. 
I usually remember this uh, is it's just a completely 100% opposite. And that's with respect to the origin. I'm going to guess. Oh, there's our point again. 3, 2, symmetric with respect to the origin. The point negative 3, negative 2. So all we're doing is we're changing the signs. Easy peasy. We got this. Now, summarizing, x-axis is um, you change the sign of the y. Y-axis, you change the sign of the x. Origin, you change the sign of both. All right, so to test for symmetry, so if you get an equation and they're asking you, um, does this equation have symmetry, we're going to have to test it. So in the x-axis, we're going to replace y with negative y in the equation and then simplify it out to see if we get something equivalent. In the y, in the, if it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, when we replace x with a negative x and simplify, we should get the same equation that we started with. And then origin, if we replace x with negative x, y with negative y, then, and simplify it out and we get the same thing, then it will be symmetric with respect to the origin. So let's test some stuff. Yeah, test it. So if I have y equals x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 2, we're going to do our three tests. We're going to plug in negative y instead of y. It's not equivalent. What scenario would this, would it be an equivalent situation? What would I have to do to this negative y to get it to look like our original equation? What, what do you do with a negative value that keeps it positive? Add it to itself. So if I had y minus y. Uh -huh. Or square it, right? So when I see the y-axis and I plug in a negative x for my x value, that simplifies down because negative x squared is the same as x squared. So it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Symmetric with respect to the origin, so we apply both of those negatives to our x and our y. And we say no because this negative y is, it gets stuck being negative. So now i got an extra negative running around that I didn't already have. And then this is what the graph looks like. So if you look, I can fold this picture along the y-axis and it'll overlap itself. But that's not true if I fold it along the x-axis, nor is it, does it have the quadrant, diagonal quadrant symmetry that we expect from origin symmetry. P equations. So if I were to graph pi equals x to the third by finding intercepts, checking for symmetry, and plotting points. So we're going to use the symmetry to help us graph. So if we are going to plot it by hand, we want to find any intercepts and check for symmetry first. So when x is equal to 0, y equals 0, and when y is equal to 0, then x is equal to 0. So the origin is the only intercept. Let's do our symmetry test. When we put in negative y for y, it gives us just one more negative running around in our function, so it is not symmetrical with the x-axis. When we replace negative x with x, I was going over this with my sixth grader last night. If I have a negative and an odd power, I get out a negative. Um, and that changes 
the sign of our function, so it's not y-axis symmetry. Uh, origin, I'm going to replace negative x and negative y, and when I do that, I get a negative in the front on the left-hand side. I get a negative on the right-hand side. I divide everything by negative 1. Here they multiply by negative 1. And the difference is negligible. And then the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. Um, by the way, I call y equals x to the third. It's a cubic function, but I call it the swimmer. Don't judge. All right, so we're going to plot some points. We're going to plug 0, 1, 2, and 3 in. So when I plug in 0, I get 0. We did that. When I plug in 1, 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. It gets big really fast. <clears throat> The reason it's called the swimmer is if you're diving into the water, this is like your body, this is your arms, and these are your legs, and you're diving in. I switched gymnastics and biology today. So if I were to plug in negative 1, I'd get out negative 1, negative 2, and negative 8. So here, if you look, I have the, this is the first quadrant and the third quadrant. So the rule of origin symmetry, where it'll appear in diagonal quadrants, is true for this function. All right. So uh, x equals y squared. Oh my goodness. This is a twist on an old classic. You know, like when you get gourmet meatloaf. Um, so instead of y equals x squared, we get x equals y squared. We're going to find our intercepts. So the lone intercept is 0, 0. Um, the graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis because when I plug in negative y, it'll give me positive. Um, here's a nice picture of the graph because you plot the points. What more could you want from a beautiful horizontal axis hugging parabola? That's it. See its little arms? Just hugging on that x-axis. Oh, love you x. Love you x-axis. No, that's not how you guys roll with math. Okay. I just spent a lot of time with math, so. Um, now we're going to graph the equation x equals y squared. On <coughs> a graphing calculator, you can only graph y equals functions. So if I were to graph this on my graphing calculator, I would have to graph y equals the square root of x to get the top half of the graph. And I'd have to graph y equals negative square root of x to get the bottom half of the graph. So you'd have to graph to get the complete graph. Because graphing calculators only do y equals. Desmos, on the other hand, will graph this like a true person. All right. Crazy guy. Look at this. 1 over x. y equals 1 over x. Intercepts, we know x cannot equal 0, or you get the zombie apocalypse because not allowed to divide by 0. So it does not cross or touch any of the axes. No intercepts. So let's test for our symmetry. When we put in negative y, no squared to get rid of the negative, so not symmetrical. When we put in negative x, also no squared or function absolute value to get rid of the negative, so not y-axis. But when we put in negative for both, putting a negative in for the y and a negative in for the x, cancels each other out. And we are uh, symmetric with respect to the origin. All right, graphing it. Look at these wonky x values that they pick. Why would I pick 1 over 10 to plug into this equation? To be terribly annoying, when I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So if you put in a fraction, 
and for your function, so I'm putting in one tenth, I will get out ten. Putting in one third, we get out three. So to be intentional about what we input, so I put in two, I get out one half. I put in three, I get out one third. I put in ten, I get out one tenth. Are those values for x? Then the value for x would be 10. Because if you put 1 tenth below 1. So, yeah, so 1 tenth. So 1 over 1 tenth will give us 10. So the whole value for x is including everything in that fraction. The value for x is 1 over x. So x is equal to 1. One over ten. The full value of y is one over x. Yeah. X is. All right. So we knew that this was going to be symmetric with respect to the origin. And if you look, we have that quadrant one, quadrant three um, graph result. Now, could you get these points if you in if you put in different values? Absolutely. If I put in um, negative 3 to positive 3, I could get out the shape of this graph. Um, they're just now we're, we have a level of sophistication where we can look at a function and go, okay, I know it's dividing by a number, 1 over x, so I'm going to put in a fraction to kind of get out a, a nice whole number. Hold there. 